Alex, are you there? Can you hear? This is Suri. Maybe he will. Uh. Are you talking? No. Oh, yes, yes, I can see this file. Can you hear? Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, please unmute. Oh. Ah, you can hear us, right? Very, very nice to have you have your talk. We'll start at three. Professor Gopal Prasad will introduce you. Just let us know whether you can hear hear us, because if you ask questions. His audio, you can hear. Hmm. Ah, okay, so uh, I, I'm sure you can hear me, right, Alex? Hmm. You have unmuted yourself, but you're not talking. Yeah. Yes, yes. Now I can start hearing you. How are you? So you can hear us, right? You can hear me. Yeah, yeah, this is noise. Very good. So Alex will wait till three o'clock. Uh, and then... yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I, I need to understand Okay, okay, okay. See you then. Right. We'll see you at three. The signal is not very clear. We can't hear you clearly. You can see the file. Um, uh, hmm. Sir, your audio is not very clear. So can you please check the microphone settings? Hello? Uh, Alex, please check the microphone settings there. Your voice is not very clear. Oh, to be honest, I don't know. Ah, yes, I can see you now. Yes. yes. You can see me now, but can you hear me better now? Yes, slightly yes. better, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. So, as long as we can hear you, it's fine. I <laughs> uh, can, can see you also. Now you will be fine. Hmm. Yeah, it is better now. It's better. Your voice. Yeah, if, if possible, can you keep the microphone near to you? Can you keep if... your microphone nearer? Nearer? I, I don't know. This is, now you hear me better. I don't know if this is with the camera or in the computer. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I think is it better now? Uh, what do you think? Yeah. I think it's okay. Yeah. We'll see as it go along. <laughs> The, 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 the we'll wait for it. Is it better now? It's slightly better. It's slightly better. Ah. Yeah, file, of course, we can see. Hmm. So you don't see my file. It's slightly like that, but not somewhat exaggerated. I cannot hear you. You, uh, you see my, my slide. Yeah, can you hear now? Well, I, I, I put my slide. Do you see them? Sir, if you have a headphone or earphone, can you use that one? We can hear you well, but the audio is not clear. I don't, not... Hear you, I don't hear you that well. Maybe if I will see you and if you talk to me, maybe it will be easier to you. I, I don't see you now. Um, you, you can see us, then you can hear us better, I think. 
Uh, your now, I you, now I hear you better, right? Do, uh, you, say, do you say my, my slides? Ah, slides are visible. Slide is visible. Your voice only is visible. Okay. Uh, you're you're audible, but uh, your voice is a uh, little bit sharp and my, cracking. My, my voice is not good. I think you know what that means. I think uh, I think something. Uh, ah, let's see. I think we can try. This is of course Okay, uh, uh, Alex, do you have a headphone? Do you have a headphone? If you can wear a headphone, it might become clearer when you speak. Uh, do you hear me better now? Yes, somewhat better, yes. Hmm. But of course, the files have to be become, they're unfocused now. Hmm. Do you hear me at all? Yes, yes, we hear you. Better than before. Better than before. Okay. Hmm. So this is a little progress now. Um, we can reopen the file. File is... Yeah. Okay. Ah, yes. So you, you hear me better now, right? Ah, definitely better. Hmm. Okay, so I'm actually I'm joining you with the microphone of the cell phone. Oh, okay. I hope, I hope the phone, <laughs> mic of the cell, cell phone seems to be better than the other microphone. We'll just wait for two minutes. Oh, people have to come after lunch. We're waiting for them. Uh -huh, okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Tell me what I can do. I can use my uh, let me let me. Words are somewhat clear. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, now now it's better. Uh, sir, okay. in case if you have a headphone or earphone, the wired one, can you please use that one? We are audible, but the words are not much clear. Um, we can hear you, but we can hear you, sir. But the words are not much not clear. very clear, not very distinct. distinct not really. letters. Okay, that's the moment. That's the moment. Let me try something. Ah. Hmm. Right. Yeah, now it is. Now you are muted, sir. You are muted it now. You are muted now. Ah, oh, yes. No, I try to say. I, I, I don't know. Ah, yeah, you can know what that means. Okay. Uh, uh, not, you, 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 you hear you. Yeah, we we hear you. You are muted now. Now you muted. You are muted now. 
Okay, can you now unmute the mic from your phone? Please, please unmute. Unmute. Uh, yeah. Now. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, this is clear. This is clear. And I suggest you please leave audio in computer. Uh, or completely so mute. Yeah, no, very clear. Yeah, so now I, put, very I, I put unmute on my computer. Yes. Yeah, this is perfect. Perfect now. This is perfect. Okay, so okay, mm -hmm. so I'm un I, I unmute on the computer and I'm uh, invisible on the cell phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, this is fine, sir. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's a combination. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll just wait for a moment and try to run yeah, the so, so, slide. So, so, so. Alex. Yeah. How are you? Fine. Who is speaking? I don't see anybody. Who is who is talking now? Hello? I heard somebody speaking, but I don't see. Hello? Do you hear me now or suddenly it's not working well? Ah, okay. Yes, sir. You can speak. Hello, Alex. I can yeah. see can you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can not see you, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, but uh, why you cannot see me? I Yeah, I want to do start video and it doesn't let me. He said that uh, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Uh, you, for some reason, you don't enable me to. Ah, okay, now it's okay. Do you do you see me now? Yeah, we can see you very well, Alex. This is Gopal Prasad. Hi, hi, Gopal. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, doing well. How are you? Well, I cannot see. I'm, I say I'm doing well. I personally, I'm okay, but you know, the country is in mess and. Uh, yeah, I'm so sorry that I cannot be with you in the conference. Well, it's not the, it's not the worst outcome of the war, but it's also a little uh, pity. Uh, you know how much I like to visit India, and I I never I, I have never given an opportunity when I had one, and uh, I was looking forward to this visit. Yeah, you know we miss you. Yeah, but uh, well, yeah, but. Uh, at least as of now, personally, we are okay. You know, my sons, my sons-in-law are in the army, but uh, now nobody is really inside Gaza. At the time that my son-in-law was in Gaza, I couldn't sleep at night. But now it's, uh, at least it's a little bit, uh, I have to admit that uh, personally, I'm a little bit better, but uh, it's not a pleasant. Situation. I hope the situation will improve, but it doesn't look like. Yeah. It doesn't look that things. Will I hope uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, I think eventually we'll manage to overcome this Hamas, but uh, the problem is that it's not even clear what does it mean to win here. You know, when you act uh, via terrorist organizations, you know, people can still bother you even. It's not like fighting an army. Yeah, I know. Anyway, yeah. we are going to go on a more peaceful subject. So now Alex Lubotsky, who does not need any introduction, will speak on uniform stability of higher rank lattices. 
and his collaborator is around, so we can discuss things with him. Bharat Ram. You see, my, uh, now you see my slides, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. We can see. It's clear. We, uh, we can see you. Yes, very well. And no, but you can so, see me, but you can see also my presentation. You see the slides, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything oh, yeah. is fine. Very sir. clearly, fine. very clear. Good, good, good. Okay, so, so we, uh, we begin. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, can I start? Yeah, we uh, we should begin now. Okay. Thank you. Um. So um. I, I uh, this is a, this is a, the first talk in a series of of three. The other two will be given by uh, Bharat uh, Rangarajan, who is uh, I guess with you now, even though I cannot see him. And uh, and, and and this is a joint work of Lev Glevsky, Nikola Monod, and Bharat on uniform stability of high rank lattices. So I'll try to give the. The general uh, introduction and the, the young generation who are better and smarter will give you the, the, the more deep and technical details. I, I want to stress, uh, first of all, that this is a kind of rigidity. So let me explain. So let G be a semi-simple Lie group over a local field K. Uh, and for this audience, I don't have to explain what is a lattice in gamma, a discrete subgroup of finite covolume. This can be uniform, co-compact or non-uniform. We denote rank of G, the K rank of G, when, when the, the, the field we work in. Just for simplicity, we can talk also about mixed uh, fields and, you know, arithmetic, as arithmetic, but uh, the, all the ideas are already in the simple group. Case uh, now we know we have a lot of experience with lattices, and you, we know that usually there is a difference between rank one and higher rank. Uh, regard the questions like local rigidity, strong rigidity, super rigidity, congruence of problem, etc. More or less at the division between SL2Z and SLNZ for n greater equal three, but we remember that not always. For example. Uh, super rigidity is true for all I rank, but also for some rank one. Now, this talk is about ULAM stability or uniform stability. It's the, it's, uh, the same. Uh, some people call it ULAM stability. Some people call it uniform stability. Some people who, uh, who don't want to get to the argument whether I should call it ULAM stability or uniform stability, just call it U stability as a compromise and uh, I, and I, 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 let me just say something which is clear to everybody here but i just want to say it what does it mean usually rigidity usually rigidity means that there is a clear easy to understand family of representations of the lattice gamma and the rigidity theorem says that if uh um something is also is similar, it is already in the family. For example, if you take a, what is super rigidity, you have a, a lattice gamma, there are clear represent, a, a finite dimensional representation of gamma. Those who are coming from the Lie group, the algebraic representation, and the finite representation, those which factor through finite quotients, and the super rigidity theorem tells you that basically every representation of the group gamma is a kind of a combination of these two tensor product or something like that. Ulam stability is such a statement for almost representation. So let's make it precise and more carefully. Let gamma be a group. Just now any say finitely generated always for us, but it, and G will be a family of GN, which are groups, and DN, which are bi-invariant matrix. All of, each DN is a bi-invariant matrix on the group GN. We say that gamma is uniform or ULAM stable with respect to this family. If for every epsilon greater than zero, 
there exists delta greater than zero such that for every n and for every map from gamma to g and now map here does not mean homomorphism map just mean a function assume you have a function from gamma to g n which is almost homomorphism in the following sense d n the, the distance between phi of g h and phi g phi h is less than delta uniformly namely for every g n h in gamma the multiplication the phi of the multiplication is almost the same so this is an all, almost representation okay how do you, how you can get such a representation a, a, such an almost representation there is a trivial way to get almost representation take an honest representation and deform the 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 form it a little bit uh, but the stability means that the, 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 the converse is true, namely, if you have any almost homomorphism, then there exists an homomorphism, uh, psi, a true homomorphism from gamma to gn, such that the distance between uh, phi g and psi g is less than epsilon for every g and g in a uniform way. Namely, every almost representation is just a small deformation of a true representation. Let me put right away a big warning. Don't confuse it with the ordinary. There are two types of stability we, uh, which can be studied for a given group gamma and the family like before of GN and with DN, there is the 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 city the 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 question of ordinary stability at uni, uniform stability, and they are different, and the answers to the questions are different. Kind of a quick way to see the difference, or kind of a, to illustrate. Let me let me explain what is ordinary stability, and let me redefine uniform stability and it's a little exercise to see that the redefinition is equivalent to the previous one we say that the, that the group gamma is stable ordinary stable with respect to this g before if for every family of maps from gamma to g n such that for every g and h in gamma the distance between g and h, uh, between between phi n of g h to phi and g times phi and h goes to zero when n goes to infinity. So this family of maps for every g and h looks eventually like like a like a homomorphism. Then there exists uh, true homomorphisms from gamma to g n such that the distance between phi and g to phi and to psi and g goes to zero when n goes to infinity for every g in, in gamma. But in this case, the assumption is local. For every g and h, it goes to zero with some rate. And the distance which we require is also with some rate. Uniform stability means that we have, again, such maps, such functions from gamma to Gn, but the supremum over Gh of gamma or a, of all G and H between phi and Gh and phi and G, phi and H goes to zero, which means we, we assume a much stronger condition. We assume that all, that, that it's, almost homomorphism in a uniform way on G and H. But in this case, we expect a stronger conclusion. We expect that there exists Psi N from Gamma to G N, such that the supremum of G of between Psi N of G, between Phi N of G and Psi N of G goes to zero. Namely, we assume uniform almost, and and we and we ask for a uniform deformation like very close to a true homomorphism. So this is just a warning because these two types of questions are studied in the literature and they are not equivalent. I want to stress this. But sometimes you can learn from technique in one to the other 
I will illustrate this uh, soon. Okay, today we will talk only on one case. There are uh, uh, other cases to study this type. There is uh, cases of uh, even with finite group, the symmetric groups, and there are actually, I just given an int, some questions of this type, which are important in computer science, but I will not elaborate at all on this today. Uh, today we'll talk only on the case where GN is UN, the unitary group, and DN is some metric induced by submultiplicative norm on MNC. For every norm on N and on, uh, on M and C, we can, which is submultiplicative means a uh, well, we can define the metric without the submultiplicity, but let but we will work only with submultiplicative norm, namely the norm of A B is at most the norm of A, the norm of B. We can define the metric Dn between A and B is simply the norm of A minus B. Examples: the operator norm. Uh, what is called sometimes the Frovenius norm, which is simply the L2 norm, or in more general, the p schachter norm for every P between one and infinity, uh, which is the norm, uh, uh, if you take a matrix and you take A, not A times A, this is A, uh, a joint times A, then uh, the 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 a joint times a is always a non-negative definite, namely the uh, it's normal operator. The eigenvalues are non-negative, so we can take square root of it. This is the absolute value of a. We take the absolute value of a to the p. We take the trace of it, and then one over p. This is called the p schachter norm. I want to stress that there are uncountably many norms here. For each one of them, it's a different problem. You cannot, at least we don't know, to deduce, assume you know that a, a theorem of stability of group with respect to one norm, it's a completely different story with respect to another norm. Even if the norm, you not say that one norm is always bigger than the other, if one norm, if norm A is bigger than norm B, which means that the assumption you make here, you see, uh, uh, let's go back to the previous slide. If one norm is, is bigger than the other, so if this satisfies with respect to the bigger norm, it certainly satisfies with respect to the smaller norm, which means a challenge for the bigger norm is certainly a challenge for the smaller norm. But assume you can solve it for the bigger norm uh, you, uh, that this goes, uh, no, so, uh, no, sorry, I said it incorrectly. Uh, assume this, is, this goes to zero for the smaller norm, you don't know that it goes to zero with the bigger norm. And if you, but if you can solve it for the bigger norm, you don't know. Uh, if you can solve it for the smaller norm, you can, you, for the, now I'm confused. If you solve it, yeah, for the smaller norm, you can you cannot know that you solve it for the bigger norm. Anyway, think about it. I got confused, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's uh, if you think about it for a second, you see that you cannot deduce from one to another. For example, if we take the, not, the Hilbert Schmidt norm, which is by definition simply one over square root n of the of the standard L2 norm, we cannot, if a group is stable with respect to Frovenius norm, we cannot deduce that it's stable with respect to the Hilbert Schmidt or, or the opposite. We really cannot. And now we are going to solve the problem for Frovenius and it's still open for the Hilbert Schmidt. For a, some, for a reason that will be uh, uh, um, later clear, this little property of submultiplicative, which is true for the for venues and not true for the Hilbert Schmidt, this condition is essential for us. It's frustrating, but this is what we have. Okay, so the, the main theorem, as I said, is a joint work with Lev Glebsky and Nicola Monod and Bharat Rangarajan. Um, 
is, is the following. Let G be U N D N, D N N is submultiplicative, namely N, D N coming from a submultiplicative norm. Let gamma be a lattice in G, G is the I rank simple Lie group over some local field. Then gamma is Ulam stable, provided G, the group G, not gamma, satisfy some condition G, Q1, Q2. I will explain what is G, Q1, Q, Q2 only later. I say now that this condition is known to be true for most simple groups, but unfortunately not to all. In fact, it's not true for some. And unfortunately, the, our theorem is very, very general. It covers uh, in some sense, almost all group, but not all groups. There is, there is an interesting challenge here uh, to make it a, a complete results. And you see, this is a kind of a rigidity results, right? We are saying that every almost representation is near a representation. So it's kind of a super rigidity for almost representation. Then, and if it's representation, then Margulis theorem tells us exactly what we are. So you can put it in line that if Margulis uh, super rigidity tell you every representation is something that we will understand, this theorem tell you that every almost representation is something that we, we understand very well. Uh, but we need here uh, uh, this assumption the GQ1, Q2, uh, it's satisfied by most simple groups. For example, it always satisfies if the field K is uh, non-Archimedean. It always satisfied. Uh, I don't read, I don't, I didn't write it here. It always satisfied when uh, uh, it's actually always satisfied for a complex league groups. But for SL for SLDR, it is it's it, I mean I wrote SLDC, but it's actually satisfied for all the complex Lie groups. And it's always uh, it's satisfied for SLDR if D greater equal four, but not for 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 D equal three for some reason that we'll see later. Okay, what is the history of the subject? The first theorem of this kind is due to Kashdan already in 82. He proved that amenable group are strongly Ulam stable with respect to the operator norm. Strongly means, you see, we define Ulam stable that every almost representation to UN can be a, a, is nearby a true representation. He proved that this is true for amenable groups, even for you, for the unitary group of infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces, not just to finite dimensional one. That's completely general results. But Burger, Java, and Tom in 2013 said it's impossible for lattices to have the strong Ulam stable. Because they prove that if gamma is any discrete group containing a free non-abelian group, then gamma is not strongly Ulam stable. Why? The proof is not complicated. It was known before, which is a nice result. It's not, it's not difficult, but it's not completely trivial. There is a nice idea. I will not stop for that. That free groups are not Ulam stable. By the way, it's trivial to see that free group are stable in the ordinary sense. And so you see that to be stable in the ordinary sense and to be stable in the uniform sense, it's not equivalent. Anyway, free groups are not Ulam stable. So what Burger, Java, and Tom did, they said, okay, for free group, we have represent, finite dimensional represent, uh, almost representation, which are not nearby representations. So they, they induce them up from the free group to gamma. The free group is of infinite index, so you get an infinite dimensional representation. And there, and so it's something doesn't know the proof of Kashdan property T, how you go from a, from a group to a lattice and vice versa. 
they show that something like that is true for almost representation. So you show that the group gamma now, when you use for the free group, also is almost representations which are not nearby representations. By the way, you know, it used to be a, a, a famous open problem with whether every non-amenable group contains a free group. Now we know that this is not the case. There are non-amenable group, groups which without free subgroups. So this leave the comparison of this theorem, leave the open problem, maybe strong Ulam stability does characterize amenability. We don't know about groups which are in between, namely they are non-amenable, but without free groups, what is the answer in these cases? But let me continue with our main uh, that Burgen and Rojava also made the connection between this subject and bounded cohomology. Uh, this is not a difficult result, but I don't want to to that. Maybe maybe uh, Barat will elaborate on that. Uh, if we 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 know that always there is a canonical map between the bounded cohomology of gamma with coefficients in R and the ordinary cohomology, and uh, they prove that if this map is not injective, then gamma does not have Ulam stability. Uh, some of you know that this is not injective if and only if there are many quasi-morphisms to a non-trivial quasi-morphism to R, and then you can take exponential of them, and then you get almost homomorphisms to S1. You can imagine what is the proof of this, which is not uh, uh, so difficult. As a corollary, which maybe, I'm not sure, maybe was not known at that time, uh, I, as various people proved some cases, but I think it was Koji Fujirava who proved the general case that if you take a lattice in rank one group, then this map from the bounded cohomology to the ordinary cohomology is never injective. So lattice, lattices in rank one groups are not Ulam stable, never Ulam stable. Okay, not even with finite dimensional. Uh, in fact, not even with one dimensional representations. Now, Burger, on the same paper in the Israel Journal, Burger, Ojaba, and Tom gave the first hint that maybe the situation in, for lattices in I rank is different. They showed that SLDZ, and in fact, even more generally, SLDOS, where O is the ring of integers in some number field localized at S, that all these groups are Ulam stable when D is greater or equal to three. Their proof uses in an essential way, and once you know uh, the bounded generation is not that difficult, they use that the bounded generation of this group, they prove it as a corollary to the bounded generation. They, I mean, it needs a proof after that, but, uh, but they use that. At that time when they prove it, well, the situation um, as of now is that some of the non-uniform lattices in non-uniform lattices in I rank simple Lie groups are known to have uh, a bounded generation. I understand that, that uh, um, in the continuation of this conference, there will be some talks about it by uh, Ren and others maybe. And then uh, bounded generation for, uh, for non-uniform, and uh, maybe one can believe that if, and it's still believed that all of them have bounded generation. So maybe one day it will be possible to prove the, the Ulam stability via this method for, for 
non-uniform lattices. But quite recently, like two, three years ago, Corvaja, Rapin, Shugren, and Zanier made a big breakthrough when they, sh they sh surprised all of us, at least me, showing that co-compact lattices are never bounded generator, never bounded generated. So, so the method of Burger, Java, and Tom cannot be extended to work for, for a general high rank lattices. Let me anyway mention that there is a feel there was a feeling of connection between Ulam stability and bounded cohomology, not bounded generation. These are not the same thing, and they are not equivalent. Or I, as far as I know, I don't think that anybody know to connect to make a kind of connection between them, except of the fact that the word bounded appears in both. Uh, what, what might be, what looks like an int. We talked yesterday, we talked before, sorry, not yesterday, I mean in the previous slide, that uh, if gamma is amenable, then it, uh, that uh, it's stable, and H bounded, the bounded cohomology of amenable group are always zero for every end. Similarly, or almost similarly, if gamma is the high rank lattice with no fixed point, with no fixed point, this is going to make some problems to us later, then the, the bounded generation uh, N, H, and B, gamma V is zero. Now, this is a big difference than rank one. You remember in rank one, we mentioned that H2 of a rank one lattice is never trivial. In fact, it's even infinitely generated. It's, a, it's of infinite dimension, sorry. Now, this theorem was proved first for n equal two by Burger and Monod, then a different proof by Burger and uh, Yuda Shalom. Um, and now I mentioned this because this is going to, the proof of this paper going to be important for us. And oh, I'm sorry. What did I write here? Oh, it's not Burger Shalom. Oh, it's, it's Monod Shalom, sorry. The second proof is by Monod and Shalom, not by Burger. Uh, the first is Burger Monod. The second is Monod Shalom, and the third is Monod for Olen. I'm, I'm sorry. The second Burger should be Monod. <laughs> well, Monod was a student of uh, Burger, but still this is the work of Monod. Okay, now all these ints are kind of, and you, you know, the, the theorem of Burger, that SLA, SLA, NZ for N greater equal three, and Ulam stability led Monod in his ICM talk in 2000 to us, is there a connection between Ulam stability and bounded cohomology? It just, it didn't make any precise uh, uh, conjecture in any direction, just say that's in the connection. And now we understand that the, the answer is yes, but. And uh, this but causes a lot of trouble as I will explain in a minute. But before we go to that, let me take you back a few years ago to, a, to another work, a, a previous work which I did with the Schiffre, Glebski, and Andrea Storm, which was about the ordinary stability, the ordinary stability, not the uniform stability. Okay, uh, let's, uh, unfortunately, we will have to use here the language of ultra product and uh, ultra limits and uh, and this model theory. It's only, in some sense, only language, but it's, you'll see it's more convenient in this uh, situation. And I will explain in a minute why. Let you be a, a ultra filter of the natural number. Now, we, we are talking about this group, unitary group UN. Let LN be the Lie algebra of them. And uh, uh, take the norm, you know, we, we are working with some DN 
matrix with coming with norms, I put also the, this, the same norm on the Lie algebra, right? The Lie algebra is a, is a, is a sub-Lie algebra of the n by n matrices. I take the, that norm, and now I'm taking the ultra product, the topological ultra product of Ln, I call it L. Those who, who are maybe not so comfortable with the language of ultra product, just think about it. You take the direct product and essentially you divide it by all the sequences which converge to zero. Uh, so this is the topological ultra product of Ln. Now, why this is why this is convenient for us? Because you see, we have almost homomorphism phi n to u n, right? U n acts on the Lie algebra as homomorphism, right? The, the joint representation. So basically, we can think of it as almost representation acting on this Lie algebra, but as almost representation. But if you think about it, if you had such a sequence of almost representations, which are kind of better and better, the 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 the, the distance, the action is getting, they are look more and more like homomorphism if we divided L by all the sequences which going to zero, then this infinite sequence, this in, infinite sequence of maps, phi n, which are almost homomorphism, define a and a true action of gamma on this ultra product is not anymore almost homomorphism. It's one homomorphism on this infinite dimensional Lie algebra, on this, on this ultra, ultra product of Lie algebra. So now we are back. Why this is so convenient? I want to stress this. This you should. This will come up in the lectures of uh, of uh, Barat, and this is one of the source of the difficulties in our work. Uh, and that now we are working this ultra product, but the benefit of this that we are not anymore in the world of almost, which is very difficult. Take almost homomorphism. What is the kernel of almost homomorphism? What is the image of almost homomorphism? You can always move it a little bit, right? And now the main technical theorem in the previous work of uh, of uh, the Schiffer, Glebsky, Tom, and mine was that if H2 of gamma with coefficients in this, uh, in this crazy L is zero, then the sequence is close to true homomorphism in the sense of ordinary stability. Okay, and then we showed, we prove it for some lattices, uh, we use Garland theory about vanishing cohomology, etc., etc., to show that many lattices uh, have this property, and recently with some work with Uri Bader and uh, Sauer and uh, Shmuel Weinberger, we showed it for many lattices in, the, in there. More or less, now we have a kind of a, a stability with respect to ordinary, as uh, a ordinary stability for high rank lattices, at least for most of them. But I don't want to elaborate on that. I just wanted to take this as suggestion why well yeah maybe before suggesting you know usually when i gave talks on that in the past people were surprised how h2 is coming to the game of this stability why h2 is so important so let me just explain this this is easy to explain you see you remember we started with phi n from gamma to u n which are almost homomorphisms now, these maps from gamma to un give you a diagonal map from gamma to the product over un. But on the product is not homomorphism. If you divide the product by the inf what we call infinitesimal, those elements which converge to, to zero along the ultra filter, but forget about it if you are not comfortable. Just think about it if you 
if you kind of identify sequences which are very close to each other, getting the this and go to zero, suddenly now phi star, phi star from gamma to this is, is a true homomorphism. And and the prod and the map from product of u n to the product of u n mod mod, mod uh, inf is is a true homomorphism. So this is homomorphism. This is homomorphism. And here is a little exercise to think about for a second. That stability is completely equivalent to the existence of extension psi which will be homomorphism, you see. To start with, we have the diagonal map from gamma to the product as not homomorphism, just almost a, a sequence of almost homomorphism. If we have an homomorphism from psi to this product, which close the diagram, then, then what it really means, it means that we have infinitely many homomorphism to the product, which are, close to phi star because modulo the infinitesimal they equal to the to the phi to the phi ends. So that's completely equivalent. And, and I, now I'm talking the ordinary stability. You'll see there is some delicate point when we'll come to the uniform stability. So 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 suddenly you see suddenly that the question of stability becomes a question of lifting homomorphism from one group to a bigger group. And this is something that, you know, mathematicians have studied for many years and developed many methods to do it. So, and now, and but what's the problem here? The problem that, ma that mathematics knows to handle this question using H2, using cohomology, if the kernel here between this product to this is abelian. For abelian kernels, you know, we know that's really vanishing of H2. But for non-abelian kernel, in principle, you can say that it's vanishing of H2, but it's a vanishing of H2 with coefficients in a non-abelian, non-commutative module. It's sort of even difficult to understand or to define what exactly it is. So the problem is, that in general, it's very difficult to handle such a lifting problem if the kernel is, is uh, non-commutative. And here, the kernel from this group downstairs is extremely non-commutative. This kind of all the infinitesimal, all the sequences in UN which converts to zero to the identity, sorry. You know, it's not even a close subgroup. It's something very crazy. Um, but... Yeah, the, the key step, kind of the key new idea in some sense, if you want, is that if the norm is some multiplicative, that's why we need it, we can approximate this K by a billion quotients one after the other. I don't have time to explain it. Barat will go over it, but uh, it's just a, like in the congruent subgroups. Take a map from SL3Z to SL3P, the, the kernel is very non-commutative, the congruent subgroup mod P. But the congruent subgroup mod P modulo the congruent subgroup mod P square is a billion. P square modulo P cube is a billion, etc., etc. So there is a situation like that here. And, and if we know vanishing of cohomology, we can we can extend this this uh, this psi in small steps and then take the limit to get this this uh, psi. so this was the method in the previous paper now our work with barat and glebski and monod started with to try to apply the same strategy which in principle can work with uniform stability but very quickly, if you if you start to do it, you see that the relevant cohomology here again. Hopefully, Barat will show, will have time to show it in more details. That the relevant cohomology is the bounded cohomology instead of the ordinary cohomology. 
But there is, at the beginning, I have to admit that we thought, okay, we have boundary cohomology, fantastic. We have all the results ready about vanishing of boundary cohomology. Oh, we can plug in the known results. We will apply the same, the, the same machinery and we'll get a, a nice results for the Ulam stability for iron lattices uh, uh, using boundary cohomology uh, like, like uh, Monod expected. But, when, when we start to write it down, we realize the issue is much more delicate. And it's very delicate, it became so complicated. I have to say that uh, Barat actually uh, joined us a little bit uh, later after we kind of had the beginning, but it became so complicated. It's only due to Barat that we could finish this. The paper is eventually 80 pages. Why? Because we have to develop a new type of cohomology. But uh, Barat will explain you that uh, cohomology in details and just give you a few hints. The problem is that you, we are here, you must speak the language of uh, non standard analysis and to understand that we need not just a lifting psi, which is some lift, we need it to be internal in the language of non standard analysis. In the ordinary stability, we didn't come to this problem because we really care about the value only of the generators and then everything is internal. I don't have time to explain me. To explain it, it will come again. I'm sure it Barat. I see that my time is almost over. So let me, uh, let. so really what we need, we need the following. What we really need here that if, that the group, uh, uh, like if we imitate the previous work to this context, then we can say that gamma is ulam G stable, if and only if every homomorphism phi that has an internal lift as a function, not as a homomorphism, also has internal lift homomorphism. And then we can do that. But to catch this internal, we have to develop a different language and develop a new cohomology theory, which we call it asymptotic cohomology. And we denote it H and A instead of B of gamma with coefficients in that Lie algebra, which is the ultra product of these Lie algebras of UN. And what we really need is to, what we really need, that's what we prove, that if the asymptotic cohomology vanish, blah, 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 then the phi n are near true homomorphism un in the uniform stability sense. Uh, just if I have a... a, a just a few more, more minutes. So let me just say that just like there is a canonical map mentioned before between the bounded cohomology to the ordinary cohomology, there is a canonical map from the asymptotic cohomology to the bounded cohomology. But we have no idea if it is injective, surjective. This is kind of a brand new type of, a, of new cohomology. I hope people will be interested and maybe can answer such question. For example, if we would know that this injective of a life will be much easier and the full theorem about I rank lattices would be proved. It's just that we don't know that this is injective. I wish we would know. Maybe it can be proved, maybe we are missing something. Anyway, what we can do, we can show that the asymptotic homology of amenable group vanish. So this kind of, we can recover Kajdan theorem, but I have to admit that in, it's not really new, it's the same type of uh, proof as before, but in our in our language. Okay. Um, I see that I have uh, one minute, but because I, I started uh, uh, one and a half, two minutes late, I will allow me, I, 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 um, I, maybe I just, I just say something. Every, okay, the strategy of the proof, 
what we really want to prove is the vanishing of this new cohomology for high rank lattices, H2, just only H2. We follow the basic methodology of a, a Monod Shalom to prove the vanishing of H2 of the bounded cohomology for I run, let's say. But every step uh, uh, has a lot of difficulties. Shapiro lemma, which is a, such a standard, almost trivial uh, uh, lemma for lattices, uh, is, it become a complicated issue here. Um, by the way, even Shapiro lemma for non-uniform lattices is not so uh, <laughs> it's trivial. I, I should refer you. There is kind of a breakthrough of Bader and uh, Roman Sauer recently, a few weeks ago, they put on the archive an amazing paper which they kind of resolved this issue, uh, you know, something which people in tomorphic forms kind of bother around this Borel and other for many years. They used geometric group theory to, uh, they actually created a new type of cohomology, something in, in the same spirit of say, or something they call a polynomial growth cohomology for non-uniform lattices and show that using this cohomology, you can overcome the many difficulties which happen there. Anyway, this is just, I just want to mention that, you know, eventually what we have to do, what we really have to do is kind of induction from the ultra product, from the ultra power of gamma to the ultra power of G, the ultra power of G is not any more locally compact group. There is no real, really R measure. So what does it mean L2 of G, G star over gamma star? So everything you have to define again and to do it and to work it out. And uh, well, luckily we had Bharat with us. And uh, uh, I'm skipping uh, this. I want to go uh, just to, because I cannot leave you without defining this a strange condition GQ1, Q2. So you will see how things are delicate here. You remember I said the theorem was that we have stable, Ulam stable, uniform stable for all lattices in simple E group, provided G satisfy this uh, strange condition. What is this condition? The condition is that G has two parabolic subgroups Q1 and Q2 satisfying that the intersection contains the minimal parabolic P, that's not difficult to satisfy, and Q1, Q2 together generate G. So it cannot be the full G because they intersect, uh, uh, yeah, it's a proper parabolic sub, of course, such that H2 bounded, Bounded, yes, yes, yes. We need some, some assumption on the bounded cohomology of Q1, of QI, but for both of them, with coefficient is R to be zero. And we need H2 now. You remember, I told you that H2 vanish. Well, I told you that H2 vanish if there is no trivial submodule. But if there is a trivial submodule, it's not necessarily vanish. And for example, take SL3. If you take SL3 and you take a proper parabolic subgroup, then Q is an extension of a minimal group by SL2R. For SL2R, it doesn't, it's a rank one, it doesn't vanish. So, so sometimes this is not satisfied. And sometimes we don't know if it's satisfied. Anyway, and we need also the H3 vanish, or at least will be out of. If we have this condition, as I said, this happens for most groups, but unfortunately not to all groups. So our theorem is fairly general, but not yet uh, complete, not yet covers all the I rank lattices. But we strongly believe that it's true for all I rank lattices, and somebody should maybe can come up and find a shortcut or another way to finish the proof. Okay, thank that's you, all. Alex. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Any questions? Just hold on.
I think he can't hear. Hello. Uh, what do we know about uh, Ulam stability of general property groups? Just, just by definition of property, nothing, uh, lattices, etc. We basically know nothing. <laughs> In fact, lattices. what? What do we know for la lattices? We, we only know for lattices. The proof goes very much uh, via lattices. You see, we start, what we do, we start with a group. We, 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 uh, we, we take the induction, we induce the, the we induce the, the uh, you see, the, uh, uh, we imitate the proof. What, what it's known in the bounded cohomology that you can take the, the standard Shapiro lemma, you can, you can uh, uh, induce a presentation and they are equal. So, but as I said, even this little lemma is very complicated for us. Uh, but once we have this lemma, the next results are always about the group G and not about gamma at all. We, we forget about gamma after the Shapiro lemma, and we only work with G. And therefore, in those cases where we succeeded, we had the results for all the lattices of gamma, because we really didn't work with gamma after the Shapiro lemma. After the Shapiro lemma, we work only with the, we work only with the, with G and not with gammas. So I know nothing about other groups of with property T. Here is, a, here is an example which I know nothing about, random groups. You know, random groups when the density between one third to, to ah, no, 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 a, a, hold on. Hold on, they are a parabolic. Oh, they probably don't have. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Koji, Koji, uh, where is Koji? I don't remember now if the if the results of Koji for Girafa was for every hyperbolic group. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can say something. Uh, I think that the results of Koji for Girafa was, I'm not completely sure that every hyperbolic group has infinite dimensional bounded cohomology. This by the results of Burger, Tom, and, and uh, Ojava means that they are not uniform stable. Okay, so yeah, that's that's interesting, which means that usually, I, uh, uh, if, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, that he didn't prove it only for lattices, prove it for every hyperbolic group, because you see the random groups between one third and, and half are T and hyperbolic. So that's mean that our results are very spatial for lattices and are not true for general uh, Lie groups. But I should check it, it's just that it, it skip, you know, I'm old guy with, uh, with, uh, with a <laughs> little dimension. <laughs> Uh, so I don't remember now. I I, I will check it. Mm, thanks. Hello, Alex. This is Gopal. So you started with the group U N, which is of course compact. Over I real. cannot. No, no. I cannot hear you, Gopal. Are you talking to me? Yeah. What I'm saying that your example in the beginning was the group U N. Right, you need to yes. So it means that you were working over non Archimedean fields because otherwise the group is compact. No, 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 no. I work, the groups are always the groups, the maps are always to UN. The gamma can come from a non Archimedean uh, uh, simple Lie group. Aha, uh -huh. and the map. This is a theory, this is a theory for UN. Now you can develop, you see, the, the, the area of stability is, is only in its infantry, you know, it's only starting in the last couple of years. Suddenly there is hopefully a lot of interest. Um, uh, I should mention the young guy, Francesco Fournier, who developed the theory when the, the family of groups that you map into are compact periodically group with the ultrametric norm there. It's a different theory. They, they are not the same. 
So, so it's really, this theory is a, is a kind of, a, 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 depends on gamma, it depends on the family GN, it depends on the DN. There is still a lot of work to do for, <laughs> for a generation of mathematicians to solve all this problem. What is beautiful that each uh, case brings interesting connection, you know, with model theory, with, uh, with uh, cohomology. There is actually very interesting connection with computer science if instead of UN, you take the symmetric group with the arming distance. In fact, even UN has a connection with quantum computation. The, the, the big breakthrough in this uh, uh, in the recent year about uh, this results in quantum computation, so, which is a corollary solve the constant bedding problem, uses stability of uh, uh, into UN with respect to the Hilbert Schmidt method, but what they study, they study a family of finite groups maps into UN, and you want uh, something which will be uniform in the family UN and in the family of finite groups. Every finite group is, uh, is stable in our sense by itself. But if you want it to be with the same epsilon and delta, then it's much diff more difficult. But it comes even in, in quantum uh, information theory. And if you do CM, it comes in a different way. It's, it's, it's became uh, a very, a very uh, wonderful subject with connections in many directions. Thank you. Any more questions? Hi, Alex. Uh, Venki here. Hello. Hi, Venki. Venki, yeah, welcome to so, Bangalore. I wanted very <laughs> much to visit you there. I'll, I'll find another opportunity. Sorry, I'm not coming. Yeah. But, uh, when you're looking at uh, homomorphisms of gamma into UN, unitary group, uh, for higher rank lattices, there are very few, right? They will have finite images most of the time. Okay, right. So but, basically, yeah, basically what we are saying you are right that if you take an I rank non uniform in the unit, right, there are very few. So this theorem is indeed very strong. It tells you that the almost representation are just little representation, little deformations of this. Yeah, thank you. I really had to stress this that uh, uh, it's a kind of a very strong theorem in the case of. Uh, 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 especially for non-uniform, because it's it's there are so few, and we understand them all. We can even count them in some somehow. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, can I ask a question? So you said that the SL three R does not satisfy the condition G Q one Q two. Is there any right. other example of a simple real lead group? which does not satisfy G, Q, and Q2? Yeah. They uh, take uh, the symplectic group. Mm -hmm. uh, in the symplectic group, the problem is that... You, uh, 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 the problem is that you, so you, you take a, a parabolic group such that the quotient is a smaller symplectic group, then the smaller symplectic group as the non-trivial H2 ordinary because it's a central extension, but it's known that it's even a bounded central extension, namely the H2 of B is not trivial. And, the, and so the condition is not satisfied. So, I, uh... I, I don't think you have to give up on that because I think maybe there are some ways to, to avoid it, but we couldn't find a way to, you mean the, to, in the case of the sp2 and r for any n, your condition does not uh, hold. Right. So so uh, I, now I, I haven't looked at our paper for quite a while, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, you know, we, we know what, uh, when this is known, the h2 and h3 condition. Mm -hmm. When I say we, I mean especially Nicola Monod, who is the world expert on bounded cohomology. In, uh, in fact, some People are working and, and improving the situation with H3. You remember I said that we need also H3. It's we need also 
sorry. We need also H3 uh, to vanish or to be housed, though the situation is seems to be improved. Our paper gave further motivation to people in bounded cohomology who study this problem anyway. They were interested in that for their own reason. Now I don't remember what this, the, the state of the art, at least our paper, we described the state of the art uh, of a few months ago, but maybe even now there are little improvements on this H3. Uh, but there we more or less classify among all the, all the simple group of, of uh, real type when we can prove it and when we cannot prove it. I want to stress for complex groups or if K is a non-Archimedean group, it's always satisfied. So our results is complete. But for real simple group, it's not complete. Thank you very much. We thank Alex and uh, we stop here. Thank you, thank you very much. I hope uh, to be with you at some point in the not too, too far uh, future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's meet at, uh, at 4.30. We'll have coffee outside.